New updates on fatty liver disease. Do you have fatty liver, also known as liver fat? In this video, I'll share the latest updates and new protocols for fatty liver. It's a topic I often discuss on my channel, but this time I'll focus on the latest updates. I'll tell you seven foods to avoid if you have fatty liver and seven foods to include in your diet. Actually, there's seven food groups, not just individual items, to keep the video more general. I'll always discuss groups for those who ask. It's crucial that you pay close attention to everything I'll say as it's new content. I've been reviewing the literature so everything is scientifically proven, which is vital for this channel. Let's start with the seven worst foods for fatty liver, and then I'll cover the best. I'll also comment on what's changed, what we thought was true, and what we now know to be true up to this point. Number one, to avoid hasn't changed, but there's an asterisk. It's about sugar, the first thing you should avoid. So, simple carbohydrates. What are simple carbohydrates? To put it simply, for everyone to understand, simple carbohydrates are sugars. This isn't just the sugar you put in coffee, but also sugars in flour, bread, cakes, pies, and pasta itself. When you digest these foods, your body turns them into sugar even if you don't eat actual sugar. So, these are foods you should control more carefully. Refined sugar, cut it out completely. You won't miss it. Now you can eat bread and cakes, but limit the amount. Prefer whole foods like pasta. If I eat pasta, I choose whole wheat. Calorie-wise, it's not much different. I must mention this because those with fatty liver need to watch calories. Metabolically, it's different as fiber slows down absorption. Simple carbs spike blood sugar but fiber improves digestion. This diet is better utilized and beneficial for those with fatty liver. So you don't need to completely restrict yourself. It's not a keto diet or one where you can't eat any carbs. No, for those with fatty liver, new studies show benefits in controlling sugar and carb intake, not eliminating them. It improves glycemic index and helps with diabetes, fatty liver, metabolic diseases, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. You'll see improvements in these other health markers too. Number two, if you have fatty liver, avoid processed meats like salami, ham, copper, turkey breast, and parma ham. I know many people will say these foods are tasty, but with fatty liver, be aware of their high sodium content. High blood pressure is linked to fatty liver too. From a metabolic standpoint, you need to be very careful. These foods also contain preservatives like nitrates and nitrites linked to increased bowel cancer risk. If you have fatty liver, you should exclude these from your diet. Like simple sugars, processed meats won't do you any favors. Opt for more nutritious foods with less sodium instead. I'll explain this better later in the list of recommended foods, but I strongly suggest removing processed meats from your diet. Now, I know many people will comment, as they often do when I discuss certain topics, but I ate salami once and I don't have colon cancer. Here, I'm talking about routine consumption of processed meats. Eating them three or more times a week increases cancer risk and worsens metabolism with increased sodium intake. You'll exceed daily sodium limits if you eat too much processed meat. I'm not talking about isolated consumption here, like occasionally eating it at a meeting when there's nothing else. It doesn't mean you can never eat it, but it shouldn't be part of your regular diet, okay? I strongly advise removing processed meats from your diet for the reasons I mentioned. Number three is about drinks, natural juices like apple, grape, and orange juice. Soft drinks must be excluded because they're empty calories. You get simple sugar with no metabolic benefit, it's just sugar. So you need to remove soft drinks from your diet. If you have fatty liver, pay special attention to juices. Today at a restaurant, I had apple juice. I asked how many apples go into a 200 milliliters glass of juice. You could easily drink two. He said he uses about four or five apples on average. If you drink two glasses, you're consuming sugar from 10 apples. This illustrates why I always say, eat the fruit, don't drink the juice, even if natural. Many people will argue, but it's natural. Yes, but you're removing the fiber, peeling off the skin, and just using the fruit's sugar. This raises the glycemic index and removes many benefits by discarding the peel. The same applies to grape juice, which is even more concentrated. 
It has more sugar per serving, even more than many sodas. Hey, did you know that? Did you think whole natural juice was harmless? If you have diabetes or fatty liver, avoid these drinks. If you're healthy, occasional orange juice won't cause harm or disease. But those with fatty liver should avoid it. I'm addressing people with fatty liver in this video. Be extra careful with natural juices, chocolate drinks, and sodas. Be careful, it's easy and you can avoid a lot of sugar. We know we need to limit sugar, not eliminate it, but restrict it. If you do this, you'll see much better metabolic results, okay? Number four, another food to avoid if you have fatty liver. This one should also be eliminated if possible. Are ultra-processed foods like boxed lasagna that you buy ready-made at the supermarket, boxed hamburgers, frozen pizzas, and instant noodles. These foods, besides sodium and carbs, a diet high in ultra-processed foods has been linked to increased incidence and frequency of fatty liver. So you need to be very careful with these foods. If you want a burger, make a homemade one. Buy meat and ingredients, make it at home. It'll be much healthier than those burgers you buy in boxes at the supermarket. I'm always against extreme restrictions, never eating certain foods again, but I suggest swapping these foods. If you really want a burger, make it at home. It'll be much healthier. You can control the ingredients, making it healthier and more nutritious with fewer preservatives which is better for fatty liver. Number five, another food to be careful with if you have fatty liver is sauces. If you enjoy salads, know that they're beneficial for fatty liver, but adding fatty dressings like cheese or Caesar dressing, you've heard of those, right? Have you tried them? Do you like them? Well, these dressings are high in fat and calories. And with salads, we don't want fats or calories. We want nutrients, minerals, vitamins, fiber, or to boost absorption. We don't want saturated fats or excess calories, so skip salad dressings. That alone will greatly benefit your health. You're going to make a salad, which is a very healthy meal. I always advocate for salads, but be careful with dressings. Many people add them thinking they're being healthy, but that's not always the case. Just because it's a salad doesn't mean it can't be harmful. Another point I want to highlight is sauces like mayonnaise which is very high in calories as well as ketchup and mustard. They contain simple sugars that raise your blood sugar, so you need to be cautious if you have fatty liver disease. I know some ketchups and mayonnaises are labeled preservative-free, but they still contain the simple sugars I mentioned, okay? If you have fatty liver, you need to be careful with these sugars as we've discussed. Number six. Also, if you have fatty liver, I suggest avoiding this one too. We're talking about alcoholic drinks. There's much debate about liver issues and alcohol consumption. Many experts say one drink a day won't harm the liver. Studies actually support this claim. But if you have liver issues like fatty liver, I strongly advise cutting out alcohol completely. As an endocrinologist, I know alcohol isn't good for those with fatty liver, so I suggest you eliminate it. Although there's another recommendation for those without liver issues, this is indeed true. Even for this group with no metabolic or liver diseases, some alcoholic drinks like wine have anti-inflammatory potential if consumed up to one dose daily and may even be beneficial for cardiovascular health. But that's another story, okay? If you're managing metabolism or have fatty liver, it's zero alcohol. Trust me, it's best for your health. I suggest you cut alcoholic drinks from your diet and routine. Hopefully, they're not part of it. But if they are, avoid them completely. My number seven, another food I suggest you be very careful with and if possible, exclude from your diet are cooking fats like lard and coconut oil. Why? Because they are high in saturated fats. There are many videos claiming that saturated fat won't harm your health, but we already know that excessive saturated fat can be harmful though a small amount of saturated fat won't clog your arteries. For artery clogging to occur, we need inflammation called oxidative stress, which causes fatty plaques to stick to artery walls, leading to problems. However, excess saturated fat can worsen this process. So don't believe claims that excess saturated fat or animal fat is harmless. That's simply not true, okay? Recent studies clearly show this. Increased LDL or bad cholesterol 
can raise your cardiovascular risk. However, normal cholesterol levels are essential for your health. We do need cholesterol, so that's also true. I'm always presenting both sides of the issue here. We need cholesterol for hormones, vitamin D, testosterone, and cortisol. It's vital for cell membranes and life. Cholesterol is beneficial, but excess is harmful. Cooking with lard often means consuming too much saturated fat, which worsens this process. Coconut oil, though plant-based, is also high in saturated fats. What are the best foods for those with fatty liver? Let's discuss foods to include in your diet that can help with this condition. There are seven main food groups to consider. The first group is fruits, especially fruits with a low glycemic index. These fruits won't spike your blood sugar levels when eaten. This is very beneficial from a metabolic standpoint. What are these fruits? Apples, plums, oranges with pulp, and berries like cherries, raspberries, and guava. Other fruits can also be helpful. Avocados, for example, contain healthy fats. Unlike coconut oil, avocados have fats that can boost good cholesterol, so it's beneficial for your health. There are many fruits that can help in this process. Don't be afraid of eating fruits. The fructose in these fruits won't harm you. It's excess fructose that's harmful. Eating an unpeeled apple gives you all the benefits. Apples contain pectin, now studied for cholesterol benefits. As you've seen, cholesterol is important. Apples, along with other fruits I mentioned, can help. Strawberries are also great for this. Anthocyanin is gaining more attention too. Fibers like chia, flax, sunflower, and pumpkin seeds also help. And here we have an important change. If fiber was already beneficial for those with fatty liver, improving digestion and absorption, now its importance has increased. New recommendations suggest consuming 35 grams of fiber daily. This includes all sources, chia seeds, fruits, and vegetables you eat. It's crucial to highlight this number. What's the average consumption in the US? We have the data. 15 grams of fiber per day. Now that's less than half the recommendation. Low fiber and high simple sugar intake can lead to metabolic diseases. We need to improve this balance and add healthier foods. Fiber is also a great option to help with this. Remember what I said about bread? Choose whole grain bread with grains and fiber. I always like to add chia seeds to yogurt, for example. I put it on fruit, like papaya. Papaya is also great for those with fatty liver. Add a bit of chia and it's even better. So, I strongly suggest adding fiber to your diet in the amount I mentioned. Number three is veggies, like cucumber, kale, lettuce, and dark leafy greens, which are being studied for metabolism benefits. In another video, I talked about coyote. Many said it's tasteless. People criticized me in the comments for talking about coyote. Who else likes coyote? Tell me your favorite vegetable in the comments. Not just coyote, but cucumber, radish, and watercress too. There are many veggies you can add to your diet. You can choose whichever vegetable you like best. They're packed with nutrients and low in calories. This boosts metabolism and increases satiety. I always eat lettuce and tomato before meals. I add some onion too. This gives me a much greater feeling of fullness. It's a high volume food with few calories. Take lettuce, for example. It'll make you feel very full. It'll prevent overeating during your main meal. So you need to add these vegetables I mentioned to your diet. Of course, there are a few veggies you'll need to be more careful with, like corn, for example, because it has a higher sugar and starch content. You digest it and it turns into sugar. So corn is one example. Potatoes are another. Potatoes aren't forbidden, but you need to be careful, okay? Go for veggies I mentioned with less sugar, carbs, or starch. All right, number four. Foods with anti-inflammatory potential. I want you to pay special attention here. It's crucial. Studies show three cups of brewed coffee daily may help those with fatty liver, especially for those with liver inflammation due to fat. It can even improve blood markers. So see how important this is? We're not sure which coffee nutrient gives us this benefit. Some studies suggest it's due to its anti-inflammatory potential. It contains polyphenols, tocopherol, and vitamin E. It also has caffeine benefits which we're familiar with, but coffee is indeed very healthy. Green tea is another drink with great anti-inflammatory potential. I'm talking about drinking green tea, not taking green tea capsules. Taking capsules can actually be dangerous for your liver. So don't take green tea supplements, but drinking green tea can be beneficial. There aren't as many studies on it as there are on coffee. You heard what I said about coffee. That one has plenty of studies. Now, recent green tea studies aren't as conclusive. 
I'm doing an update video, so I need to share this with you. But we suspect it's due to its anti-inflammatory potential. What are some other foods? Onions and garlic also have studies backing them. Turmeric or curcuma? Who likes it? Ginger and pepper. I really enjoy pepper. How about you? Which pepper do you like? I used to eat the world's hottest pepper. But now with kids, it's risky to have such strong peppers at home. So I cut back and now I'm using regular chili peppers, which are much milder. Did you know I've eaten the world's hottest pepper here? It's called the Carolina Reaper. Have you tried it? Be very careful, especially if you have kids at home. It's really potent. I really loved it though. Peppers contain capsaicin, which is the active compound. There are many studies on its anti-inflammatory potential. Other foods like cocoa and dark chocolate, up to 30 grams daily, contain flavonoids and polyphenols with anti-inflammatory properties. Studies show this cocoa dose I mentioned can even improve high blood pressure. When I say coffee helps with fatty liver or cocoa with high blood pressure, I'm not claiming it's a cure, okay? It's not as simple as just drinking coffee to prevent fatty liver, but these foods can help alongside other dietary choices and combined with other measures, they can improve your health. Got it? So let's not misinterpret the video but see these as foods that can help alongside other measures. Number five, crucial, though not a food, I insisted on including in this list, hydration. Both in conversation and in practice, when treating ER patients, I noticed most don't hydrate properly with the daily fluid intake they need. Why is consuming this amount so important? Often our brain confuses hunger with thirst. So you might eat more just because you're slightly dehydrated. Also, your body functions better when properly hydrated. So what's the recommended amount? I'll give you two measurements. First is 30 milliliters per kilogram of body weight. That's daily, spread throughout the day. The other measure is for those in the US, England and countries using different units. It's equivalent to 0.5 ounces per pound of body weight. Just calculate based on your weight. So I need to drink about three liters of water daily spread throughout the day. It's an easy goal to achieve, but many people don't do it. So you need to pay special attention to staying hydrated. Number six, which has to be on the list of best foods, is olive oil. Olive oil has good fats and anti-inflammatory properties, which can help those with fatty liver. So instead of using lard, use olive oil for cooking. Many worry olive oil can't be heated due to its smoke point, thinking it'll lose its benefits. But this won't happen on your home stove, for example. You won't reach temperatures high enough to hit olive oil's smoke point at home. So you can use olive oil to saute vegetables. What's the catch? Since it's calorie dense, you need to watch the amount you use. To get these metabolic and heart benefits, seven milliliters of olive oil daily is enough. It won't add excess calories, but will offer metabolic perks. I'm a big fan of using olive oil. Number seven on the list of best foods for fatty liver is lean protein like eggs. And you don't need to skip the yolk. You can eat up to one or two whole eggs with the protein rich whites, but the yolk is also important, containing B vitamins, for example, which are crucial for memory and lutein for eye health. So you don't have to remove the yolk. If you eat tons of eggs daily, like gym buffs prepping for competitions, then you might need to watch your yolk intake. However, eating one to two eggs a day is generally good for your health. Other proteins like fish, not just omega-3 rich ones like salmon and sardines, which are great for health. Any fish you can get is good as it's a lean protein source. Chicken can also help as it boosts your metabolism. 